Now, the first main category I think you should look at is what we would call lightly aged rums. Many people would probably call them white rums. Essentially, yes, they are white rums. But I think when you include rums that have been aged three years that may have been filtered, I think we kind of have to sort of broadly call them lightly aged rums. And this is the first category. Now, I probably would go for tiki cocktails. I would probably go more English style of rums. Now, you from you guys, regular viewers, would know from my daiquiri love, I always go Spanish origin column uh, rums because I like that light, clean, crisp, bright sort of style. But when it comes to tiki cocktails, I don't think they actually add much to the flavor of a tiki cocktail. They just add the punch of rum without much flavor. So for me, if I was starting out my tiki journey, I would pick one of these. Now the five rums that you've got here, we come from sort of all over the Caribbean. Uh, we've got El Dorado three-year-old, we've got uh, Chairman's Reserve, so uh, Guyana, we've got St. Lucian Chairman's Reserve three-year-old there. I'll skip that one, I'll come back to that. We've got Dawley's the three-year-old. I would, if you can get it, the 47% ABV over the 40% ABV. I love that. That's a really good, kind of really lovely, vibrant tropical notes on that. A little bit more expensive. Actually, a little bit harder to get at the moment, but I prefer the 47. And then we've obviously got Plantation, three stars. And I can never remember Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad. I always sort of think Guyana's in there, but Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana, um, Trinidad. All of those... I forgot this one, didn't I? Um, Boutique um, Rum Company, signature blend number one. It is agricole, uh, unaged agricole with unaged Jamaican and a four-year-old Jamaican in there as well. Very different vibes. Perhaps not for beginner, but even sort of intermediate level before you go really down a tiki journey. I think intermediate to that, I think that is comes into its own because that does add a completely different vibe to your tiki cocktails. The reason I go for these, I think all of these stand up really well in those kind of cocktails with other flavors. Uh, when you go Kingston 62, perhaps not. I don't think worth it. Um, uh, Ray and Nephew kind of fits in here as well. I don't think you kind of want that. As you're just starting out, you don't want that kind of big, heavy ABV Jamaican funk going on in here. If it was me on this part of my journey, I would probably, at really beginner level, I would probably go Plantation three stars. However, for me further down, if I could only pick one of these, I'm going the Boutique Rum Company Signature Blend number one. Now, I've made quite a few of these videos before, but probably nothing in the last year or so where I've kind of deep dived and given you my overall sort of view of which rums from which categories you should buy. But after a few questions from my recent Tiki series of videos, I wanted to kind of make this even simpler because I understand that there is a core community of beginners that want to get into to tiki and want to create these cocktails but haven't got the budgets and don't really want to be buying sort of 12 or 13 rums. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Martin Kate's uh, classification in Smuggler's Cove. These are these are you know the go-to I've got plenty down there but they're kind of the go-to cocktail books. Martin Kate for all you know has actually got 21 classifications of rums in there. You probably I think he goes on about sort of nine or ten actually that are the big ones that you should kind of go through through, but I'm going to break this down into five categories. You've already seen the lightly aged. We've got another four to come, but I'm also going to add in a little twist of a category at the end. And by the way, uh, for you guys over in the US and Canada, if you've um, got some, get what, I, what you would think are glaring emissions from what I kind of going to talk about in these categories, feel free to add them in because as I keep saying, we don't have access to the Hamiltons, uh, the Denizens and all that in the UK. We, and Karuba to a certain extent, you know, we don't have these rums. So this comes from a very much UK and protect actually probably more European point, but I want to hear from the US guys. The more experience, but think beginner. Please don't go off on really expensive rums. You've got to think of beginner angles. So the second category I think you definitely do need is what we call Demerara rum. Essentially, 
Guyana, DDL, El Dorado. It's the, you know, DDL distillery is the only distillery in Guyana and it's the one where Demerara rum comes from. There are no other rums around the world called Demerara rum. They give their own unique kind of uh, flavor profile. And I definitely 100% think that you kind of need this profile for your rums. Now, even within that category, we've got very different flavor profiles going on. Now, for the majority of you, I dare say you might be around the sort of El Dorado mark. And this is why that like Hamilton's will come into their own as well. Again, as I've just said, we don't have access to Hamilton's. I've got no knowledge of Hamilton Rums or Denison uh, to kind of play in this category. So please, US guys, please help us out here. But I dare say for US, uh, Canada, and uh, other sort of places like that, actually your go-to might be El Dorado 12 year old because it is uh, a lot cheaper than what it is here in the UK. In the UK, I think potentially for beginner level, I would go one of two angles. I've included pusses in there as well. Um, there is a glaring emission, but you'll find in a later kind of, uh, uh, later category where actually the other pusses comes out. But actually for me, if I'm being brutally honest, a beginner level, I'm going that. I am go I've fallen in love with this. And for me, this is actually more of it's a different kind of rum. It's a different kind of blend. But actually, what this brings to rum cocktails for me, the price it brings it to me, I personally would rather have that over El Dorado eight-year-old. But there is nothing wrong with those rums. And if you can afford to do El Dorado 15, uh, do it. But again, I think that's more of a sipping rum for the vast majority of people. But price is up to you but my if i had if i could only have one i'm probably going that now now for the third category i'm probably combining two categories from martin k i'm i'm combining a uh, blended lightly aged with column still lightly aged as well because i do think there's a little bit of a crossover at beginner level now as you'll see i've got eight examples here my only thing with this Look, th th this is where I want to clarify things. From my own palate, if I'm sipping rum neat or kind of uh, a simple mixer, like rum and mixer, I predominantly go Spanish style, Spanish origin column still. Again, full disclosure, I'm not the hugest fan of a, a fan of a seven-year-old, but I understand it. There is a big, big fan base for it. It's just personally not my cup of tea, all right? So while I do have these for... Uh, mixers and that and sipping neat I actually for tiki cocktails I'm more inclined to go for English origin um rums and my two picks here again these will all roughly be around the 30 pounds UK 25 to 30 pounds UK what's that 33 to 38 dollars 39 dollars uh, euros give or take around about that uh, so this is the sort of category you're going to. If I could only pick one, I'm as much as I love Appleton eight-year-old, I'm probably going Chairman's Reserve Legacy. I think the added depth of flavor that that brings to tiki cocktails, remember tiki cocktails are all about bouncing different flavors and different rums together to create, create an overriding sort of cocktail. They're not light. They're not sort of you know, tasteless. They have got plenty of flavor to them. And I think for me personally, uh, Chairman's Reserve Legacy it fits that bill. But you know what? Any of those are going to do you proud for a beginner level. And there's probably a whole plethora of other rums behind me with, that would also play in that field as well. The next category we turn to is Jamaican pot still. There is nothing like adding that funk, that pot still vibe from Jamaica to a tiki cocktail. You know, the, the flavors, the, the aroma are just uncomparable to any other rum. You definitely 100% need it when you're starting out with rum cocktails. There is just no substitute for it. So there isn't actually that many players, especially what I've got behind the bar in this category. There is a rum that I'm going to talk about in a second that kind of crosses over two categories that might be a good shout if you're in the UK. But for me, we've got these. We've got Rumbar Gold, Worthy Park, Cheapest Chips. We've got Smith & Cross, higher ABV, plenty of funk at beginner level, really, really tasty. Not a bad price, a little bit expensive, um, 
you know, for me, there are better, cheaper alternatives, um, but it is a great, fantastic run. Swan, and again, the reason it's here is because the US, I think it's a damn sight, even though it's a UK brand, um, it's a damn sight cheaper in the US for some reason. Uh, Hamden, eight-year-old, stonking run. Is it beginner level? It should be. It's not a beginner price. It is over the £50, $60, 58 59 euro mark in the uk it is very very expensive yes it is a great run but for for 20 pounds cheaper you get marginally marginally i'm going to say use the word inferior i don't mean that i love plantations of maca for instance plantations of maca actually would be my pick here um, for this because I've got a higher ABV stuff coming in a second um, and I love this. This is a cracking, I've got used to it. I didn't really appreciate it first off, but I've got used to it. And now the, the flavors it adds to rum cocktails is for me in the price bracket, amazing, really, really good. Um, so that would be my pick. Now the crossover in this category and it crosses over into the Demerara rum category is this. Uh, this is the Boutique Company uh, Signature Blend number two. It's Guyana and Jamaica. Now, does it bring the funk element you get from a Jamaica rum? No. Does it bring the out and out Demerara vibes you bring from uh, kind of El Dorado or Skipper or anything like that? No but it has elements of both in one rum. So if you're on a budget, especially in the UK, because you, you will be able to get this very easily in the UK. You know, if you're on a budget and you only want one rum to cover those two playing grounds, then this could be a good shout. It really could. But just bearing in mind, not all cocktails call for um, a Demerara rum and a Jamaican rum in the same thing. Yes, this plays really well in my Thai world, but as you'll have seen in recent Tiki cocktail videos, sometimes you just want a Jamaican rum, sometimes you want a Demerara rum um, with kind of other like Barbados rum or something like that. So this is an option. I wouldn't say it replaces both. The next category we move on to, I kind of like bring two or three categories from Smuggler's Cove together here for this. And I'm just going for dark overproof. I think Smuggler's Cove has uh, black blended overproof and white overproof and black blended. I kind of count all those together. The four runners and riders we have here in the UK that I would put in this category are right here. This is definitely where Hamilton 151 comes out to play. And I probably think for a lot of you, you guys in the US, I probably think uh, um, a Hamilton 151 might steal it. But having never tried it, I can't testify to that. It's not a UK product. So uh, the runners and riders in here, look, these are all fantastic rums. And do you know what? If I had the money, all four of these would be in my collection. They they have to be. The Puss's Overproof 151 is phenomenal. The Worthy 109 is phenomenal. I mean, amazing in Dark and Stormies and that kind of stuff. The Puss's Gunpowder Proof is phenomenal. But if I can only have one, it's a pretty easy pick for me because it is my favourite rum here by a landslide. It is a rum, even though it's high ABV, it is a rum that I actually really enjoy sipping neat as well. But the depth of flavour in this is just delicious and it just makes, any time you use 15 ml of it, 30 ml of it in a tiki cocktail, it just brings that cocktail to life. So Plantation OFTD for the uninitiated, oh, that's delicious. True story, that's actually what it stands for. Now this is kind of a bonus category that I'm gonna give you and not many tiki people would kind of talk about this, but I do think, especially in the UK market, but I think this should be worldwide as well. I do think if you go for proper spiced rums, they can add so much to a tiki cocktail. Bearing in mind you've got those flavors, so you can actually cut out a few ingredients as well. You know, you can replace like gingers, falernums, and all that sort of stuff with spiced rums. But I want to emphasize I'm talking proper spiced rums, not your heavily sweetened spiced rums. Rum geeks and tiki gurus, don't come at me. I'm not talking about, you know, those heavily sweetened stuff, your crackens, your bamboos. I'm talking about spiced rums that are essentially proper rums 
just spiced up with a bit of flavor in here. The four square would probably be, four square spiced would probably be in here as well, because it is really unsweet. It's not my favorite, but it will probably work really well here. And these add a very different twist, and I guarantee it, they will work in most tiki cocktails, but just bring a different slant to them. So the three we've got here, Chairman's Reserve, is essentially Chairman's, not the original, uh, there it is, the Chairman's original, um, spiced up, added spices. Um, the Pusses, Gunpowder proof, spiced. It's essentially pusses gunpowder proof with spices added to it. And then we've got the Dong Q barrel aged spice, which is essentially, I'm, I think it's actually younger. I think it's like the five year old or something like that, or maybe, maybe even slightly younger, but it's essentially proper Dong Q rum, again, with proper spices. I would take, I would urge, you know, in my collection, I need all three of those. But again, if I'm having one, it's a, it's a new one to me and I've fallen in love with it, that Don Q Sparrow Age Spiced is absolutely blinding. And I promise you, riff up some of your tiki cocktails. I'm even talking like it's simple stuff like pina coladas, painkillers and that sort of stuff. Even the most simplest cocktails. Add a spiced rum that isn't sweet to those and boy, you are on a whole new level.